Hello everybody, Maven here and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. If you are new here and you like the modern format and you like weird decks, then you've come to the right place because we play weird modern decks every single Monday and Friday, soon to be Wednesdays as well. And we're currently live on twitch.tv slash mavenphoenix, link down below if you want to check it out and hang out on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays are when we do our streams. We're starting Sunday streams this week, so hope to see you there. And uh, today... The new card from New Capenna we are testing out is going to be Ginny Faye Jet Mirror Second. But before we talk about the deck, of course, we got to do a question of the day, as we do. So I always thought that token archetypes are some of the most underrated, underplayed archetypes in modern. So the question of the day is going to be, what is an archetype you always think is very underrated and underplay that doesn't see enough play? You know, decks like Slivers, decks like Ally Tribal. You know, there's some really good archetypes out there that just don't see play. So what is one in your opinion? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, so Ginny Faye Jetmere Second is going to be, in this deck, it's going to cost two green and a white to be a 3-3 three, three that says, if you create tokens, instead you can create that many 2-2 two, two hasty cats or that many 3-1 vigilant dogs. So it's gonna upgrade our token production. And token the token producers that we do have is gonna be Legion's Landing, which we can flip it into a Donto and start paying three and tapping it to make uh, some 1-1 one, one life-linking tokens. We got Gather the Town's Flock to make two humans. Raise the Alarm, Instant Speed, create two soldiers. Verdant Command, Instant Speed can create two squirrels or counter the loyalty ability of a walker. Exile a card from a grave, gain three life. This card is actually very underrated as well. Very solid card. Good token producer as well. Lingering Souls, play and flash that back. When you're playing a token archetype, this has got to be a staple. Just make so many tokens. And Spectre Procession, make three spirits for three Three mana can't go wrong with that either and uh we got the intangible virtue to help buff the tokens plus one plus one in vigilance and then the venerated loxodon to convoke out off of our tokens and put a whole bunch of one one counters on them and this thing just beefs up the board like crazy path is going to be our removal of choice and we got 21 total lands now the reason we don't have gavany township in here is because this is green green white and this is white 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 so having gavany in your opener could potentially screw your turn three play plus we're also splashing black for the lingering souls so it felt like it was a little too dangerous to run gavany township in here especially with only 21 lands onto the sideboard we got rip for the graveyard we got um conclave tribunal which we can convoke off of our tokens to exile a non-land permanent so that's just to pair it alongside path we need extra removal and then we got collector oof to stop artifacts we got sundering growth to blow up artifacts and enchantments but also can populate our tokens and then we got gadog teague to stop big non-creature spells out of decks like tron and control and then we got damping sphere to stop tron and amulet titan and then we got void mirror for tron and for um cascade and with that, we can go into the gameplay here in a sec, but first, a quick word for our sponsors. Shout out to TCGplayer.com, the best marketplace on, on the internet to get your Magic the Gathering cards, sealed product, accessories, anything Magic related, you name it, or anything TCG related, because they got all the popular TCGs in stock. Anything you purchase through our decklist link below or our TCGplayer.com link below, those will support the channel. And shout out to Mana Traders for making, doing, YouTube possible because it costs like a million dollars to buy all these decks to play for YouTube. But for something like Mana Traders, for a monthly fee, you can rent and play all the decks you want. So it's definitely a lifesaver. If you want to play a whole bunch of Moto, you should use something like Mana Traders. And link down below with the code for 15% off. And shout outs to our Patreon supporters whose names have been scrolling down below for helping to financially support this channel, making it possible as well. Thank you so much. If you wanna go the extra mile as well, Patreon link down below. And with that, let's get onto the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, game number one here against Gift Shop, and we are gonna be on the draw with some green, white, Ginny Faye tokens. And that's a one lander, so it's gonna be a mulligan. That one we will keep. We can flip our Legion's Landing here pretty easily. Um, we're going to bottom a land. Let's get rid of this Wooded Foothills because we already got our perfect colors. No, don't thought seize me. Okay, Burning Inquiry. Okay, we still kept everything. And we also milled over Lingering Souls. That's perfect. And we also still got to keep our Black Source. That's great. Um, I don't care about pathing that right now. It's just Legion's Landing because my number one priority right now is flipping this... Uh, Legion's Landing to give us a little bit of ramp. Uh, 
They get him for four, we'll take it. I have some life links, so it's fine. Basic Mountain and Goblin Lore. Oh, Basic Forest, I don't have to pay the life. Nice. Get in there for one, and we'll just hold up, raise the alarm. Swamp and Cathartic Reunion, sure. Let's open up the graveyard, graveyards here so we can get a better view of what they're working with. Gurmag Angler, it's a bunch of looting spells. All right, we'll take the four, down to 13. And that's all they got? All right, this is looking good for us. Raise the alarm. And let's go to combat, swing for three, flip our Legion's Landing. Oh, I should have played my, my Razor Ridge first, but then again, that's probably gonna flashback Lingering Souls anyways. So we'll shock here, flashback Lingering Souls. And then we'll gather the townsfolk. At this point, I think they might keep back their hollow one. Flame White Phoenix hard cast, and that's forced to swing. Again, with a lot. All right. Do I jump to save four life? Yeah, I think I will because my, my Adonto can... Um, make tokens every turn so I can just replace that token that I lost and it also makes life linking tokens which is even better all right well we will go with tapped razor verge thicket I'll gather the townsfolk and then I'll just hold a path I think tokens is one of the strongest and most underrated modern archetypes like seriously tokens always feels very good every time we play it very strong. It's hard for removal decks to deal with because you're going wide, making multiple bodies per spell. And um, yeah, and then once you get down an intangible virtue or something, it's hard to deal with because it's an enchantment. A lot of decks can't deal with that too easily. And then, yeah, it just like makes everything into a big threat. And the good thing is blood gas cannot block. Really want Force of Virtue for this. That normally goes in tokens, but because of the Ginny Fey, I couldn't find the room. I think it's fine without it. You know, we got the lo the Venerated Locks it on and the Intangible Virtue still. We still got a lot of ways to pump the tokens. Um, and Dotha Triome, I probably want to cycle that. You know what? Yeah, I'll probably cycle that once I get the chance. I'll just play this tap line and I'll hold up a Danto's ability and just get in with Uratang. And I'll be able to gain a life back up to 10 and then make a life linking chump blocker. They're cycling hollow one. And they're scooping. All right, cool. Onto the sideboard. We definitely need graveyard hate. Um, the hollow one deck can still play around graveyard hate. They can, their stuff is very hard castable, but I'm still going to bring it in. So give me the rips. I don't think I'm gonna bring in Conclave Tribunal. Um, I can deal with hollow ones with it and like Ox of Agonis and whatnot if they happen to get that out, but I don't think I need it. Damping Sphere is actually quite good here. They do a lot of spell casting shenanigans, um, like looting spells and whatnot. So Damping Sphere can really slow them down. Um, but also the thing is, um, Flame Wake Phoenix's ability, it's an ability. It's not a cast, so I don't think it affects that. It's not bad, though. I could see it. But I really don't have a lot to really take out here. And honestly, I think I might cut intangible virtues. I want to keep my token density up, and they don't really have a good way to deal with any of our stuff anyways. So, But it feels really weird to cut that. It does feel really weird to cut it. Um, you know, I'll cut some lingering souls since we're bringing in rips. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all we need. I'm not going to bring in damping spheres. They're fine, but can live without them. 
Would be funny if he got Fateful Hour. Yeah, like I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. All right, this is good. We'll keep this. I wish we had another untapped land because we get the Legion's Landing play again. Burning Inquiry, give me, let me keep my, oh no. I'm telling you, there's some times in the game of Magic the Gathering where Burning Inquiry is either the worst card in the world or the best card in the world. And right now it's one of those best times because, and I've done this before, Burning Inquiry, you can sometimes make the opponent discard all their lands and just keep them with the zero land hand. I've done that before. And it just happened to me. Yeah, we're screwed. I need the opponent to have the world's worst hand right now because I need to get back in the game. Verdant Command can also exile a card from a graveyard, which can be pretty useful. They cycle a Street Wraith, grow their Flame Blade Adept. Cycle again. Don't tell me you got the hollow one. They fetch. Don't tell me you got goblin lore too. No! This thing's fat like your mom. And I don't have any paths. And I can't chum block it because it's got menace. Don't tell me you got multiple street wraiths. They cycle four street wraiths there. Are you kidding me? I gotta take this. Like, I need to flip my Legion's Landing, so I gotta take this. I'm down to 10. And they have a Hollow One. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, Burning Inquiry OP. Sometimes it's broken, sometimes it sucks. You know, like, that was one of those broken times where they just got lucky. And because I'm the master of Mana Screw, of course the Burning Inquiry had to make me ditch all my lands. All right, this is looking good. Keeping it. We can possibly do the Ginny Fay thing here. I just need to draw another green source. Burning Inquiry, okay, that, uh, that's fine. I still got to keep lots of goodies. And I got my Ginny Fay mana still. All right. We'll pass and hold up Verdant Command. This card is pretty underrated. It always feels very solid. Flame Blade Adept, sure. Adept or Adept? No! <laughs> the fish is here. I could have exiled the grave. Or at least one card. Alright, I'm just going to gain three life and make two squirrels. And let's go for a temple garden here and get out Ginny Fay. And now it's time to get this party started. The dog party. We're gonna make it all these these three one dogs. I'll probably chump the fish here because I don't want to take five. These squirrels are not gonna be nearly as good as the dogs were. Oh, you suck! No. What did Jenny Faye ever do to you? Now all her dogs and cats are going to starve because of you. All right. Spectre Possession into Verdant, Verdant Loxodon. That's not bad. So I think I might not chump. I will. Okay, Wooded Bastion, and, or you know what? We have Lingering Souls in the Grave. Let's go for that. 
lingering souls plus raise the alarm and then we'll convoke out the loxodon Unfortunately, the Loxodon can't quite trade with the fish. I need a top deck in Intangible Virtue. That'd be great. We can still win this, I still believe. Cathartic, okay. They grow their Flame Blade. They ditch a Flame Wake. They can get back here and fly over top and get in for five evasive. They're gonna chunk us for a lot of damage here because I'm not blocking. And it's just getting in with everything? I assume so. Oh no, they're keeping the fish back? That's fine by me. I don't think they're in the position to be defensive. I think they need to be aggressive, but they are being defensive. So that is okay. I'll take seven down to nine. Come on, give me that intangible. Give me that intangible. Didn't get it. All right, well, let's tap here for double white. And then here we will Spectra Procession, play a tap land. And I think I'm just smashing with everything. They're going to block Venerated Locks it on and take 10 and go to five. Now I got some chump blockage. I can live. This is real close. <laughs> Come on. Give me that intangible. Imagine if I had Ginny Faye this whole time. It'd be so much better because the dogs have vigilance. I would already have intangible built in. The flame blades growing from the goblin lore. If they hit their land drop here, they're getting back a hasty blood ghast. And they scoop it up, dude. Heck yeah. Finally, the curse is broken. The curse of always getting the turn one loss in every, or the, the game one loss in every single league we do the past three weeks of YouTube videos. But the curse is broken. And of course, it was the super underrated archetype of tokens. I totally believe in, in tokens being such a underplayed archetype. It is so amazing. Remember back then when black white tokens was such a big thing and bitter blossom had it was before bitter blossom originally got banned but then bitter blossom got unbanned and then people were playing black white tokens again for a little bit and it was still really good and now nobody plays it nobody it can get ran over by aggro but it's still really good against a lot of things and now that we're partway through the video if you felt it deserve to like a comment or a share i'd really appreciate it it helps grow the channel all right thank you all right, on to game number two against Steve Knack, and we're going to be on the draw. Six land spectral. I think I can do better. And it's a Yorion deck. Oh, no. All right, I'm going to keep this one, and I'll ditch Flooded Strand. Please don't. Oh, it is the Omnath deck. No. Okay, we lost. I don't, I don't think this deck is beatable, in all honesty. I think that the Yorion Omnath deck is pretty much unbeatable. As unbeatable as a magic deck can get in modern. All right, let's grab our Indatha. And we'll hold up a Verdant Command here and we'll raise the alarm.
Oh, come on. Dash that monkey at me. Heck yeah. <laughs> They're not gonna see it coming. All right, raise the alarm. You love to see it. You just love to punish. We, we love punishing monkeys here on the Marin MTG channel. That's what we do. Get out of here. You ain't stealing my goods, Raghavan. All right, what did Bastion tap for? Double white, triple white, and spectral. All right, now please don't have a Fury because I'm pretty certain you do because you're a top tier broken Yorion deck. Even though you're running 80 cards and you shouldn't have found one of your four Furies, you probably have it because that's just the nature of, of $3,000 decks. All right, they have the Omnath, they're drawing a card. That is what we didn't want to see. Um, yeah, I'll just hold up double squirrels here. So let's just get in here with the spirit tokens. Intangible virtue would be a nice draw. I wouldn't mind lingering souls. Jenny Faye would be all right. I don't know any Persona references. Birds, birds, birds. Ice Fang Kotal Khan. They draw a card. And see, Ice Fang Kotal's. Oh, man. Ice Fang Kotal's normally one of the most annoying creatures ever, but to token decks, it's not. That's what I love about it. Are right, they're exiling one of my flyers? And they're staying back with the Omnath. They're scared. They're scared of it. All right. Tap here for green. And let's vert and command. Gain three life and make squirrels. And do it again. Jenny Faye, raise the alarm. Gather the townsfolk. I don't know why I played that land. I should have sandbagged it. All right, gather the townsfolk. Get in with the flyers. Dude, I've never needed an intangible virtue ever more than right now. I would have been able to swing there with the, all my creatures if it wasn't for that solitude on the table. Expressive iteration. What does his last ability do? Deals four damage to each opponent. All right. They get a free expressive iteration off the expressive iteration. If it's not too much trouble, could you explain the deck concept? Just create tokens. That's that's the deck concept. Make tokens, make tokens, make tokens. And then we um, uh, we use Ginny Faye to turn our tokens into dogs. And we pump the tokens and get in. That's basically it. Oh, Legion's landing. You know what? I'll do that. I'll do Legion's Landing and flip it here. I'll swing with everything. Even though they're gonna gain three life off Solitude, I'm still gonna do it. They're down to 15. I got this Adonto replacing my tokens every turn. Oh, uh, Ren and Six can ping my flyer. No. Okay, never mind. They're just returning lands. Ren and Six is going to be really annoying in this matchup. Has the ability to ping my tokens. Uh, 
Ice Fang Kotal, and now they can grab Yorion, but they're one mana short of playing it. But yeah, flickering with Yorion here is going to be very unbeatable. Once they do that, I'm scooping. And they just hard cast another Solitude, Sorcery Speed. You love to see it. They exile my token, and they're going to start getting in and gaining some life. Oh, they're not. They're still staying back. All right. I might as well just fetch here. I'll get a Godless Shrine, I guess. Hey, there's the Ginny. All right, so tap here for double green. And a white. Oh, they have a counter spell. Rip. I'm I'm gonna scoop because they're gonna just get a land and then grab Yorion and play it here and bounce everything, exile two creatures, draw two cards, draw three cards and exile two creatures. There's no way I'm, I'm gonna win. All right, onto the sideboard. Yeah, this is the Yorion Omnath deck is one of the most unbeatable decks in modern right now. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, there's really nothing for me to bring in from the sideboard here. I already have path to hit Omnath and Yorion. Um, maybe I should cut a couple paths to bring in a couple Conclave Tribunals because then they don't get to fetch a land and I could deal with things like Ren and Six and Teferi with Conclave Tribunal. So I think that's better. Um, yeah, I'll run it like that. That seems fine. I don't think there's anything that Gadok Teague is going to stop. So yeah, this this will do. Okay, there's Shinny Faye, there's some tokens. That's a turn three flipped Legion's Landing, so I'll I'll take it. Looks good. Alright. Get out Legion's Landing. Attempt to flip it soon. They're gonna have to like prismatic ending my Legion's Landing or my vampire token here to stop it. Alright, they're going for an abundant growth, sure. Um, I'll go for the sorcery speed spell here. Maybe in that situation I should always go for the uh, instant speed spell because now they know that we're about to flip and now they can react to it and deal with it. So yeah, now that yeah they got the prismatic ending now or the the march of otherworldly light and they're going to exile the legion's landing so that's why i should always do the sorcery speed one because it's less predictable or the instant speed one because it's less predictable so it's my fault for trying to go for the sorcery speed because i normally do the instant speed one but in this situation i was like whatever all right jenny Faye time green green white Like, I don't understand how that's a 2-2 two -two haste cat when it's so tiny and the dog is just like literally a normal everyday dog and yet it's a 3-1 vigilance. Like, there's warriors in Magic the Gathering that are 1-1 one, one first strikes and stuff like that. It's just like, how is the dog a 3-1? And Ginny Faye got bounced. All right. Um, well, I guess we're replaying Ginny Faye. And we're going to kill it to fairy and hit them for two pre-modern horizons 2 there wasn't that many really good ways to beat tokens in the main deck but now they have fury and fury is a good way and they're gonna do the same thing again that's annoying
All right, to ferry them, them. They're down to 11, but they keep on cantripping and stopping our turns. And let me guess, Solitude? Fury, there it is, that's what we're fearing. And it's hard casted too. I'll have to path that here. So I can get in for a couple damage. MTG power and toughness make no sense. I mean, yeah, like there's some cards that are just like, how the heck is this card stronger in stats than this card from years ago that was like, you can tell by the art that this creature is way bigger and more powerful, but somehow this one has better stats. All right, let's uh, make some squirrels. Gain some life. And raise the alarm. We got lethal on the table, but they probably have a solitude. And the solitude is going to really screw us up here. It's going to exile a thing, block a thing, gain three, and they're only going to net lose one. But Legion's Landing makes it worth it to swing here. So that's good. I'm going to be able to flip and start making a bunch of tokens. And here comes the Solitude that we all seen coming a mile away. Yep. Exile a Who Man. They block a Who Man. They go to five. Where the heck are my intangible virtues? I haven't found a single one the entire stream so far. And they're grabbing Yorion so they can flicker their stuff and exile another creature and draw two cards. Totally fair. I'm gonna do raise the alarm here because it makes more bodies. Ooh. Okay. I'll just pay the mana for this, not hold up a Danto, because I want to be able to swing with as many bodies as I can. Deal with Solitude. Come on. Please tell me that's it. Don't have more tricks up your sleeve. It's gotta be just endurance, right? Endurance is the only thing you're holding up. Those players secretly have no shame. Of course not. They queue up with Yorion Omnath. They have no shame whatsoever. Channel point reward for shaming players who play Yorion Omnath. <laughs> I already do that by default. You don't have to pay points for that. Kind of like how the kind of stranger things can kill a bear. What? What are we talking about? Oh, the kid from Stranger Things can kill a bear. I haven't watched that movie, so I don't know what the reference is. And they get back their... Yep, they had a March of Otherworldly Light. What do they ditch to it? They ditched Yori onto it. And I lost everything. That sucks. Now I'm in a really bad spot. It 
See, I was thinking of not rallying the, the past turn because like now I would have been able to hold it up because you see I got two mana. You know, like it would have been better use of the mana for me to hold it, but I was just trying to go aggro mode. It gives me no benefit to swing here, so I'm just passing. And there's the endurance. They recycle their own graveyard because they want to try to get Fury back, but Fury's exiled. Oh yeah, swing with your solitude. I'm going to block with three dudes because if they deal with one, the two will still be able to clean up the solitude. Oh, they have Ewit. I shouldn't have done that. No, they're going to have Ewit. Bro, where's my cards? Give me some Magic the Gathering cards. I wish I had to secure the wastes right now. And another Solitude. I'm telling you, this deck's unbeatable. Get some for three, we'll take it. Give me a card. Oh my goodness. I'm only running 21 lands. Why don't I have Horizon Canopy? Why do I have no Gavany Township? I mean, I know why I don't because, you know, Spectral Possession is three white and Ginny Faye is double green white. That's why I don't have Gavany, but it would be great right now. Okay, there's Ginny. Don't counter it. All right. Now we're doing something interesting. Now at least instead of making one ones every turn, we're making three one vigilances, which is better. But unfortunately, the Endurance can still eat them. Bro, stop. Stop. Just stop with these Solitudes. That's the third Solitude. You have 60 cards in your deck. You're a Yorion 80 card deck. How have you found three Solitudes in the top 20 cards? You gotta be kidding me. There's no way, man. There's no way. Raise the alarm. I'm literally holding that for another Ginny. I'm holding that until I find another Ginny. I imagine they're going to start pecking in with their Ice Fang Kotal. They're not, okay. All right, venerated locks it on, not bad. I will tap everything I got. Actually, let's actually make a life linker here. And then let's suit up our life linkers and our vigilance guy. Cool, it worked. That's a good play. Now we're talking. Now our guys can swing into those solitudes. I'm definitely gonna start alphaing now. And right as I say I'm about to start alphaing, what did they find? Prismatic any okay, not the worst. If I swing all out, they're going to 
um, trade off their Ice Fang Codal for my 4-2 Vigilance. And then they're going to eat a Vampire. And then there's going to be 6 damage going at them. Which they might just take. I'm not sure. Let's cycle this in Dotha real quick to see if we can get, like, you know, an intangible virtue. Nope. Um, I think I'm, uh, do I make that swing? Do I do it? They're going to eat a vampire, trade the ice fang for the dog, which is free for them. Gonna take six and go to one. They might swing back with their solitudes and gain six back. I don't think it's worth. I don't think it's worth. They might have some interaction or something. Deal with one token, get in with the solitudes, gain six. It's not gonna look good for me. And I, I'm fetching to thin, even though I don't think that's a thing that works in Magic the Gathering, but right now I'm in desperate mode. Ginny Faye, please. Another Legion's Landing. Um, I'm not playing that. I'm just staying back. Dude, seriously though, where are my intangible virtues? I haven't found one all stream. There's four in the deck. And they managed to find three solitudes in the top 20 cards of their 80 card deck. Like, what is my luck right now? Prismatic ending deals with the dog. Dang it. Double dog, dang it. Um, all right, let's Adonto. And there it is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I was asking for. All right, now let's um, go to combat. And I think I will swing with everything. But if they can deal with the um, the uh, untangible virtue here, I'm getting Omega screwed. All right, they are just Omega blocking, dealing with everything they can. All right, they lost a good amount of their board. I'm going to Legion's Landing here just to replace it, replace that token. And then I'll hold up, uh, raise the alarm here Okay, good. I have enough mana. I was like, did I need to play the planes? But no. Okay, they scoop it up. Thank goodness. We're going to game three. I'll try to remember to cut that out of the YouTube video. So the opponent got kicked for inactivity there. They were gone for like 10 minutes and we're just sitting there. And it looks like we got a free win out of that. We did beat them in uh, game number two there. So there was still a chance that we could have legitimately beat them. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. Taking down the Yorion deck that is virtually unbeatable. Our chances weren't great, but you know, there was the opportunity. So we are now 2 and 0, oh, moving on to round number 3. Let's get it. All right. Game number 3 against Luxor 777. We're on the draw and double intangible. That is a treat because all day we have not been drawing this card at all. And so I also got the turn three flipped uh, Legion's Landing if we get uninteracted with. And then on top of that, stacking double intangible. This is shaping up to be real nice if the opponent doesn't thought seize us. No. Did I jinx it? Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> the worst thing in modern to see on the first turn is an untapped black source. All right, Legion's Landing, go. Triple intangible. Oh, baby. No, they did it. Okay, but I still got two token makers. They might be on tokens also. 
Possibly. So it's just black, white, planeswalkers, mid range control. Kaya. Kaya actually might be a little annoying. Does Kaya's minus deal with the permanent with one or less, or does her plus do that? Or does she plus to do both of those? Because, like, she pluses to exile the graveyard. And does she also plus to do the minus, to do the kill a thing, or does she minus to do that? They take my raise the alarm. Oh, and then they're going to thought seize me again and take my burden command. So it's going to turn off my potential flip. Oh, never mind. White is, they got Legion's Landing as well. Ah, oh, prismatic. Rip. Ooh, Ginny Faye. Fetid Heath. Oh, so it's definitely a, it's definitely a Tor mod deck. All right. Well, we need, we need black. But we also need a second green for Ginny. We also need a third white for Spectrals. I'm just gonna grab Temple Garden. We don't need black right now because we don't have the, we don't have the thing. What do you call it? Lingering Souls. All right. Let's make some squoils. And blood gas cannot block, so that's good. Ooh, gather the townsfolk. I'm gonna do that. Get in there for two. Gets in for two, we'll take it. And three mana, Soren, Imperious Blood Lord. So it is vampires. They're gonna helix one of our creatures. That's fine because we're still gonna flip our Legion's Landing. They're getting back their blood gassed. Ooh, what did Bastion? I hit my land. So now I can go with Intangible Virtue. And then I can kill Soren. Flip our Legion's Landing. And then play another Intangible Virtue. Heck yeah. And now our Adonto taps three to make a three, three Vigilance lifelink, which is pretty nutty. And they scoop it up <laughs> exactly as expected. All right. Sideboard against black, white vampire control. Um, Conclave Tribunal can exile the Soren. That's pretty good. Um... That's probably it, right? Yeah, that's that's it. That's fine. Rest in peace stops them from doing the little cycling the blood gas shenanigans, but don't think I need to worry too much about that. Um I'll cut probably a couple gather the towns folks. There we go. Kaya her let's see. Yeah, her minus one exiles a permanent with one or less. All right. I mean, this is a very uneventful hand, but as I always say, I try to avoid mulliganing against Thoughtseize decks wherever possible. So I'm just going to keep this and hope I draw tokens. I mean, I got that set up with the intangible if they don't Thoughtseize it. And they didn't Thoughtseize it. Okay, there we go. Now we're talking. I'm gonna go get my Endotha Triome here. It is really hot. My fan is blowing warm air at me right now. I'm surprised I'm not sweating. Endotha. Oh, Ginny Faye, let's go. Um, but I'm not gonna wait on the raise the alarm for Ginny Faye here. I'm just gonna raise the alarm now. Three mana, Kaya, Soren, Thoughtseize. Okay, um, let's raise the alarm here. I honestly have no idea what they're about to take because everything I have is great. 
probably intangible because it's the hardest thing to deal with. If they have March of Otherworldly Light or Vindicate, they might not take intangible. Um, Conclave Tribunal is a maybe. They're all maybes. Every single one. Did you tweet? Wait. Tweet a thing a couple days ago that it was snowing? Yeah. Like, I was literally going to say, it was like, literally the day before that, it was like 60, 70 degrees. It was sunny. And then the very next day, it's like 30 degrees and snowing. And I'm like, what happened? It's like, what's happening in North Dakota right now? I don't even know. North Dakota is just like, it's, it's just winter again. I'm not sure what's happening in the North. All right. I get to keep my Ginny Faye. I got a double intangible now. Yay, perfect time for cozy. But yeah, like now it's hot again. It was snowing a few days ago, but now it's hot again. Uh, oh, they demonetization to my board. All right, but double intangible setting up for anything I potentially draw now. I would love a lingering souls or a spectral. There's eight of them to draw. I just need one to be satisfied. Hey, that's what I like to see. Okay, let's fetch, get our basic planes and lingering souls it up. Flashback and just like that, 12 power of flying vigilance. Opponent's gonna need another demonetization here, which I wouldn't be surprised if they're actually sandbagging that. Prismatic. Okay, they're spot removing things. That's a good sign. That's a, a smallpox is totally fine here. That's you should have cited that out. That is not good against tokens. I'll ditch a planes and a spirit. And planes. Yeah, flagstones. I should have known that was an indicator of pox. I didn't see it in game one though. Oh, I'll take those squirrels. I'll take anything that makes tokens. Oh, this can also counter the loyalty ability of a planeswalker. So if they Kaya and minus. All right, so in response, gain three life. Do I have anything in the graveyard I need to deal with? No, all right. And they're scooping it up. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a quick and easy game. Got there. We are now three and O, taking down black white control. I love black white control. Um, I just I'm not that big a fan of smallpox like I used to be. I feel like it's very like situational. Like if you get it on the second turn off Urborg and Flagstones, awesome, way to go. But you have to have like not only smallpox in your opener, but you got to have the Flagstones and the Urborg. It's too much setup. And that I think is kind of an inconsistent late game card. And sometimes in some situations can hurt you more than it hurts your opponent. Um, I'm not that I'm not that big a fan of it. Like, but just black white control by itself, just like good old mid range with Tormod and good walkers and good removal, like demonetization's very versatile card. Like, I think it's really solid. Game number four here against middle terminus, and we're gonna be on the play with some Ginny Faye tokens. And um, those are two colorless lands. I think I have to mulligan. Unfortunately, the Wooded Bastions did screw us over like they eventually inevitably would. This is better. They have Gigantha as a companion, which if this is Jund, I'm going to regret bottoming a path, but if it's like Tron, then yeah, it doesn't matter. I feel like our matchup against Tron's probably terrible because, 
you know, they're just going to play an Ugin or an O-Stone and sweep our board, and then we just are screwed. I've played a lot of tokens in my past, and going up against Tron was not pretty every single time. There's got to be a lot more ways that tokens pack to deal with Tron. Okay, Pluto Delta, so it's probably like a DRC type of deck. Another venerated Loxodon. All right, let's just gather the town's flock here. Please don't spell pie. Don't spell snare, spell pie. Please don't. Stubborn. Oh, it's going to be stubborn in aisle. Yeah, that sucks. I really needed this. Okay, never mind. And they didn't shock, so maybe it's not shadow. Manamo. Just control. Ledger shredder, but I'm not going to cast multiple spells likely. All right, they're going to connive. And they do get the counter. They ditch another Ledger Shredder. I'm probably just going to path that, though. Unless I get a land for Jenny Faye. Gather the Townsfolk. All right, I'm going to do that so that next turn I'm able to uh, Venerated Locks it on. Just saw someone had a combat efficiency of 14 and 0. Is that even possible? Yeah, that if you got 14 kills and you didn't die, then yeah, you have a 14.0 combat efficiency. Um, or if you got 28 kills and you only got two deaths, then yeah, you got a 14.0 combat efficiency. It's a cookbook Asmirano deck. Okay, that's cool. Let your shredder. You should be going green, though, so you can, like, finale of devastation for your Asmirano. Make it more consistent. Oh, they just had the nutty nut draw. All right, I'm going to go get another another Underworld cookbook. But they don't have their uh, Oval Chase Daredevil yet. Or do they? All right, I'll take three. And we will go for Path on this Ledger Shredder. Or do I do it on the Asmirano because it's going to start baking things? But they don't have the old Chase Daredevil, so I'm just going to hit the flyer. And then I'll go for my, my elephant. They connive. Get a counter on all them boys. Academy Manufacturer. I'm surprised they do. Oh, they're going to just. Oh, they got triple unearth. Cool. <laughs> All right. I was like surprised they discarded that. Like, you should definitely be using that. And then another cookbook. If their last card is Oval Chase, that is going to be the worst. We definitely lost their last, their last card's Oval Chase. Shadow Spear. All right. So it's a Saga deck. Gather the townsfolk again. All right, well, I think let's gather the townsfolk and then we'll just venerated locks it on. Or, you know, I'll tap these two power guys because then they'll be able to swing into um, Asmirano and Academy Manufacturer. Are taking it. I could have been using my burning command to like deal with their unearths. I'll keep that in mind for the future. Oh, now their ledger shredders got life link. Why are you swinging? You got to be defensive. I clearly got the bigger board. But now they got two foods that they can shoot at something. And they found a saga. Lingering souls. All right, um, let's just go to combat and alpha, I guess. I think I'll just swing everything, even the little guys that can potentially get eaten. I'll just swing everything. 
So they're likely going to snipe an elephant with the foods, and then they're just going to eat here, and then eat here, and then take 12 plus 4 is 16 and go to 1. I'm going to do that. Yep, eat there, eat there, snipe the No, 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 you can't do that. You have to chump something. No, no, you can yeah, yeah, that works. Because you can snipe an elephant and then go to one. You can use your foods. Yeah, you can go to one. Is there anything I can do with this that can get me the game here? Probably not. Down to one. And um I can gain three life with my verting command. So if they think they're going to get lethal on us, they might not. Okay, they're staying back now. So they can make a construct token, which they should have made the construct token and um, put the the shadow spear on it because it'd be a big, fatter, much fatter creature. Oh, Legion's landing. Do I still just alpha here? They're gonna eat my elephant, eat a human token. I think I do just alpha. I'll be able to flip my legions landing. Like I'm not doing math here. Math is for blockers. I'm just gonna swing everything. Yep, there's the construct. All right, they eat some dudes. And that's game, that's enough. You're going to have to do some chumping on those big guys. Because you gain four to five, but then you take nine and, and you're dead. So you're at essentially five here. So you're going to have to block those other humans. And you still take Xaxi's five. That's Xaxi's lethal, no matter how you put it. Oh, heck yeah, dude. Nope, you can't do that. Even if you block a 3-3 human, you're still dead. Exaxes. This is why you should have made the Construct first and then put the Shadow Spear on the Construct because it'd be a 7-7 seven, seven lifelinker. And I would have for sure lost. Oh, they can gain 3 life with the food! No! I forgot about that. No way! No! Okay, we lost. Yeah, now, now we lost. That sucks. We got robbed. What's up, Virginia Ponics? How's it going? Thank you so much for the follow. All right, so um, Asmerano, food, graveyard. Um, do I want Rip? Probably. I probably want Collector Oof. I probably want Conclave Tribunal. And I, I want Sundering Growth, right? Maybe not Sundering Growth. I can I can kill a cookbook. I guess so. So yeah, that's gonna be what we bring in. Um I don't know what to cut though, because I like intangible is such a good card, but like since I'm bringing in a lot of non-creature stuff, it feels like I gotta cut non-creature for non-creature. I'm going to cut one Legion's Landing, a Ginny Fay, one Intangible. Probably cutting all the Gather the Townsfolk. One Loxodon. And one more Intangible. Just only keep two Intangibles, I guess.
All right, rip conclave elephants. This doesn't look good, but I'm keeping it. Keeping it just for the rip. Conclave can deal with something. If I get some tokens, the Loxodon can be convoked out. And I do got a lot of tokens in this deck. Um, I'm going to start on Windswept Teeth and I'll go get my Indotha Triome. Another Conclave Tribunal. Well, we got our control stuff covered. I just need some tokens. Give me a Spectral, give me Lingering Souls. I should have cut Lingering Souls because I brought in the rips. What am I doing? Ledger Shredder. All right, I mean, that's a token. I, I asked for tokens, right? And pass turn. Do I have no way in my sideboard to deal with Sagas? I forgot Saga was there. I probably should have prepared for that. I do have Sundering Growth. All right, I'll go for the Loxodon. And here comes the Constructs. This is going to be rough. I might have to just use my Conclave Tribunals on those tokens. That feels bad, man, but... I think I have to do that. Or maybe I got to do it on the cookbook so they can't make even more tokens. I'm not sure. Do I trade off my... Yeah, I think I actually trade off my elephant for the construct. I hate that, but... Gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, Spectral's good. It's gonna make them connive, but it's good. Did I tap wrong? I tapped wrong. All right, Spectral. Venerated 2.0. Yep, you connive. Next turn I can Conclave Tribunal on the Ledger Shredder because it's going to be annoying to block my spirits. I will relentlessly trade off these elephants for these constructs. It is worth it. Time Sieve, but they don't have their academy manufacturer, so that's okay. Emery's okay because the graveyard's exiled. All right, I will double conclave here. I'm taking this. And they're growing their guy again. What did Bastion? I don't know why I didn't sandbag it, but let's go for Conclave Tribunal. Exile Ledger Shredder. And then Conclave Tribunal. And exile the Construct Token. And get in there for seven. Probably chomping. They, they have no use for Emery. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so they're taking three. I gain three because I have lifelink. And they're scooping it up. I could have probably flipped my Adanto there and then just better hard cast the Conclave Tribunal. I should have done that. It's all right though. We still got there. And um, 
game three because there there's a saga now so what can we do to prepare for that nothing so in other words we're we're sending it right back and hoping we draw the sundering growth the ideal draw here would be turn one legion oh no 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 wait 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 actually you know what no i'll i'll, I'll keep the lingering souls in I'll, I'll, rather than gather the townsfolk because i'd rather have the flying so turn one legion's landing into turn two um sundering growth would be the ideal draw out here legion's landing no sundering growth but we got the rest in peace and we got lots of tokens spectral but we got an overgrown tomb that's a little bit awkward so we're gonna need like a wooded bastion but i'm gonna keep this this looks good I think I'll fetch probably a basic planes here. And it's okay if they thought sees us because we got the double rip. What's up, Granzel? Our grand grand seal, rather. What's poppin'? Thoughtseize, there it is, but I'm not too worried because double rip. It would suck if they had double Thoughtseize, though. They mulligan to five. That is excellent for us. Working on your website, nice. Okay, they took the, the spell I wasn't expecting. Well, there's venerated locks it on i i'm actually not worried at all if they took spectral procession because i was nowhere near triple white mana i could really use some lands though Slam this rip. Get in there for one, gain a life. I need the sundering growth, give it to me. I need it right here, right now. Didn't get it. What did Bastion though? So I got my colors. Oh, they don't have the mana to make tokens. Yo, we're in there, boys. All right, get in there for one. I'll go get my Indatha here. They're floating. And they got another Saga. And Academy Manufacturer, that is fine. I do have Conclave Tribunal for that. I wish it had flash like the the cast out, but it doesn't. All right, they're making three tokens. Asmerano. You can go and get another cookbook. All right, I would love to elephant here, but I definitely should probably deal with this, this uh, Manufacturer immediately. Ooh, Sundering Growth. All right, so I can just Sundering Growth this thing. Um, or I could Sundering Growth the Urza Saga and put them back down to one mana. But they do have the Underworld Cookbook and we're aware of that. So here's, here's what I can do. I can populate the token. A Sundering Growth the Saga, populate the token, and then I can Conclave Tribunal on the Academy Manufacturer. Get wrecked. Get wrecked. All right. Back down to one mana they go. Cookbook. Gets in for three. Oh, raise the alarm. And now we lock it on and put counters on Uratang. 
Boom. Now we suddenly have 12 power on the table with four of it being lifelink. And we can flip our legion's landing and start making lifelinkers. And they're scooping it up. Nice. Taking down this super spicy cool Demir um, food deck. That was pretty cool with the Ledger Shredder. Ledger Shredder is a really awesome card. Definitely. It was, it's going to be a card that sees a lot of play in modern, I can tell. Um, just people are going to start throwing in like Grix's shadow and whatnot. It's going to be a thing. We just got to wait for it. And we are now four and O oh with Ginny Faye tokens. Moving on to the finals. We have now profited and we're getting a minimum of five treasure chests. It's a giant leap from three to four wins getting one treasure chest versus five. That's huge. I really think it should be a jump to three, but I'll take five for sure. All right, here we go. Game number five against Darth Jerome. This is for everything or nothing. Our life is on the line. This looks like a really good keep because that's a turn three flip Legion's Landing. And it's going to be Tron. Dude, why? I just said Tron is the worst mashup for tokens. Tron always has to be the one to crush your hopes and dreams no matter what. What the heck, dude? Magic gods, why? Arceus, what did I do to deserve this? <sighs> okay, um, play a planes, go to combat, swing for one. So my sideboard for Tron, I have a lot of cards to bring in. I have so many cards to bring in against Tron. I got Damping Sphere, Void Mirror, Gadok Teague, Sundering Growth. Um, what else? I have more. I have a lot of things I can bring in against Tron. Basically, I'm bringing in my entire sideboard. Oh, dude, just turn, just turn three, Karn, whatever. I, I can bring in my entire sideboard except um rest in peace because it looks like i can kill karn here so that's good but i'm losing my land all right play a forest let's go to combat let's attack karn flip our legions landing and then we'll lingering souls i need a black source to flash back here give me a fetch Sanctum of Ugin. Now they can go and get. Now they can Ugin here, and just minus zero and exile everything. Another Karn. All right, that's fine. And they're just probably gonna plus and plus four and distract me here. Oh, they're just gonna deal with the Legion's landing. All right. Ooh, intangible virtue. You say. I'm going to shock here so I can path the Ulamog. Let's, um, Intangible Virtue. And let's go to combat. Go at Karn. Karn. Them. Them. And them. They're down to 13. We're so close. They're gonna have their other tower here so they can play Ulumog, but I'll path it. They're probably gonna exile Intangible Virtue plus Temple Garden. Or Intangible Virtue plus like the life linking token or something. I don't know. No Ulamog, all right. If it's a worm coil, that's fine because I can path it too. I'm just really trying to do everything I can to dodge Ugin. All right, they're one short of Ulamog. They're gonna go and grab a bridge. They're gonna grab a bridge, aren't they? No, they're gonna grab engineered explosives or something, like Ratchet Bomb. They're gonna grab Ratchet Bomb. Dude, don't do it. Don't do it. No Ratchet Bomb. Please. Please, I'm begging you. I don't have a basic swamp where I path my own guy so I can flashback souls.
Walking Ballista, that's not the worst. All right. Um, they'll be able to Ulamog here if I path the Ballista. I'm pretty sure they got another land, though. I'm going to do it, though, because, like, it's going to be annoying to have to swing everything at Karn. So I'm giving them the choice. Do they want to fetch a forest or do they want to kill one thing? It looks like they want to kill one thing. All right. Razor Ridge Thicket. Gavin, or gather the townsfolk. And I'll swing six at them and two at Karn. Because, like, I just got to put Karn in the range where I can't minus again. I don't care if it pluses. The plus isn't going to do anything. I'm just going to hit it once for two, so it can't minus. And I'm going to hit them for six, bring them to seven. And maybe we can get there. So swing all at them. Bring this one back. Swing this one at Karn. All right. And I'm still holding the path for Ulamog. Come on, we got this. We got this. That was probably really loud. Yo, the tunneling cat. Thank you so much for the follow. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Blast zone, but that doesn't hit zero drops. Okay, there, there it is. There's the Ulamog. All right. That's fine. They plus Karn, sure. Path Ulamog. Can I please top deck another intangible virtue? Please. Raise the alarm, that's not bad. All right, let's go to combat. Swing all at them. But we're gonna take one back and swing it at Karn as we do. No, you're kidding me. They top decked O Stone. We almost beat Tron. And they topped an O Stone. Why do our, all our opponents do that? They like find the answer at the last second. It's like you are not living. This is your last chance. And they always get it. <laughs> Why do they always get it, dude? Nurturing Peatland so they can cantrip. Go to combat, swing all. That's so dumb. All right, oh, we still got lethal here. Legion's landing in to raise the alarm. Can they dig it? What's your last, what's your last, what's your top deck now? What, what's it gonna be now? You get to cantrip with a peatland, yep. How has Ginny played? Ginny's been great. It's just we haven't really had a lot of opportunities to use her because they keep dealing with her immediately. Um, be oh, you gotta be kidding, dude. We're getting robbed so hard. Give me my black source, dude. Give me my black source. I need to flash back these souls. I need the flyers. And they have another Karn. They're just gonna go get like a bridge or something. They're ticking up. Okay. Chromatic Star. The thing about Ginny is that like, you know, when you play against tokens, you usually are too, you don't want to use your spot removal on tokens. So when Ginny comes out, they have all the spot removal ready for her. Oh man, the venerated Loxodon. I want to do that, but I also want to swing a Karn. I also want to flip my Legion's Landing. I don't know. I think I, I have to put the counters. I have to get some beef on the table. But that sucks, man. We got so robbed.
I was like so excited, like, yes, we're finally gonna get a 5-0 on the channel, like in since we brought leagues back two months ago. And it's like, ah, oh, sorry, you gotta go up against Tron in the last round. It's like all our hopes and dreams down the drain. Chromatic Sphere. Ancient Stirrings, they're just chaining off. They're just going off now. They grab a Karn, Liberated. It's gonna play it and exile my Venerated, locks it on. They're gonna go and grab an Ensnaring Bridge or something. I grab a worm coil. Yeah, this this is a scoop. That sucks. All right. Going on to game number two, we have a lot of things to bring in here. So let's go ahead and just grab everything and throw it in. But we don't need the rips, so take out the rips. So let's bring in everything else. We're going to cut Spectral Procession because it dies to our own Gadok Teague. Um, and then... We're gonna cut probably a couple paths because we, we got the Conclave Tribunals. Um, cut one Venerated Loxodon, one Ginny Fey. You know what? I think we actually have to cut all the Ginny Feys here. It might not be quick enough. One Legion's Landing. And one Gather the Townsfolk. And run it like that. I guess Gadok Teague also stops Conclave Tribunal. I I would have loved to put Gavany in here, um, eating a sandwich, but Ginny is double green and a white, and Spectral Procession is triple white. So having like 21 lands and like having a Gavany in there could potentially screw our turn three plays a lot of the time. If it's like if the Gavany's like in our opener. All right, um, all right, we're gonna be on the play. We drew no sideboard cards despite bringing in 12 sideboard cards. So I think I'm gonna have to mulligan. We drew the worst of our sideboard cards, but we do got turn one, Legion's Landing, turn two, Gather the Townsfolk with an intangible virtue. Um, that's pretty aggressive, but I don't think it's gonna beat Tron. I think I have to mulligan for like, Sundering Growth, Gadok Teague, Collector Oof. I got a mulligan for that stuff. There's Collector Oof, I'll take that. So keep this and we will bottom uh, Windswept Heath and gather the townsfolk. There's a tower, play the map, there you go. Oh, uh, I should have just bought him to land. All right, oof. And they're just gonna have natural Tron anyways, cool. All right, that was a good draw. And I do have the black source now. Get in there for two. Don't tell me they just have natural Tron. The collector oof was all for naught. And there is a dismember. You'll love to see it. <laughs> Yo, CPV, that emote combo. That's hilarious. That would probably go good on the mad emote, maybe. Or one of them. It's got to fit very well on one of them. Heading out and, and you'll be in the VC when you're ready. A friend of mine will be joining. All right. Um, it'll be a while. Remember, after I'm done streaming, I have to record the, the outros. And then I have to, like, eat some food, you know, like, it's going to be a it's going to be a minute. Hey, that does work pretty good. All 
All right, we'll flash back souls. And then I'll hold up Verdant Command. Oh, hey, you know what's cool? Verdant Command can counter a Planeswalker loyalty ability. It's one of its modes, counter a loyalty ability of a walker. So if they like play Ugin and like minus, I can like say no. That's hilarious. Hey, they're doing it. All right. But unfortunately, we can't kill the Yugen. I'm just doing it for the swag because we lost anyways. I got to like top deck an intangible virtue. <laughs> I wish it had a minus one to do that. Oh, another one. Let's go. Let's go. All right, we're taking care of this Ugin. Or we can, oh, you know what? We can just go after them because we can get lethal here. We go after them, hit them for six, and then we counter the ability. We get two more squirrels and then we hit them for eight. That's Xaxi's lethal. I just need them to not have anything to play. I just need them to not have a ballista, have no creatures whatsoever. And yeah, we can actually, uh, we can actually kill them here potentially. Do I go for that or do I go for killing Ugin? You know, the more and more you wait against Strawn, the more they're going to assemble things. So I think I'm going to actually go after them. All right, gather the town's flock and pass a turn. Come on, you robbed me last game. It's time for me to rob you back, okay? Okay, Tron player? I'm the robber now. All right. Counter it again. Lumog, Ballista, oh, don't be Ballista. Okay, Lumog, I can maybe beat this. They're killing some flyers. Dude, I have eight tokens, they're gonna go to one. I'm getting robbed again. I'm getting robbed again, dude. You gotta be kidding, give me intangible right now. Give me intangible, lingering souls. I'm getting robbed again. I can kill Ugin and I'm forced to. Dude, that sucks. All right, well, I guess we gotta attack Ugin. They're killing a squirrel, you monster. Who would kill a squirrel? All right, um, Lingering Souls. And they're probably going to crack their relic and eat the rest of Lingering Souls, but it's all right. <sighs> yeah, the virtue. It's never there when we need it the most. How is it turn six and we got 50 cards in our library? Don't we start with 60 cards in our deck? How have we only drawn three cards? What happened to our library? Why is it? Did I like, did I submit like a, a 65 card deck or something? Oh no, I mulligan. That's right. I mulligan to five. And there's the Karn. Uh, so they can barely live on one again if they exile one of my tokens. Exile a flyer. Yep, and they can live on one. So they have to stay back. Um, but they did not exile the graveyard, meaning I can flash back my souls. They forgot to do it.
All right, attack all of them. But I think I actually swing this one at Karn just to keep him from not minus threeing again. Yeah. All right, Karn's at two, can't minus. I have nothing in hand for Karn to plus on. And this could be it. All right, desperation mode. Come on, no Thrag Tusk. Another relic, they get to crack it again. Yup, yup. Yeah, this is this is time for final boss music right here. Another Ulamog, I can still beat that. And they have only one mana left. I think we got there, boys. Hey, there is justice in the world. Heck yeah, but now we're on the draw, so we lost. <laughs> now we're on the draw. All right, I need the opponent to have the worst hand ever and just mulligan to like four. Um, we're submitting it right back. Okay, please give me a lot of sideboard cards like in my opener. Give me like Gadok Teague. Give me Damping Sphere. Damping Sphere would be the best. I need to shut down Tron. Give me Damping Sphere. Give me all the goods. Just just give me the best hand. I brought in 12 cards from the sideboard. There's no way I don't get like at least two good ones in the opener. Collector Oof. I mean, they're gonna be able to crack their map before I get out the Oof. That's the problem. This this could potentially be really bad. You know, honestly, I think I have to mulligan. Like, on the draw, I think I have to mulligan for Damping Sphere specifically. Or at least Void Mirror. I can settle for a Void Mirror, but I, I really think I should be digging for Damping Sphere. There's no way this is beating Tron. This hand. Yeah, I have to mulligan. I need the goods. That's not... I need the goods. I, I gotta mulligan more. Sundering Growth. Void Mirror. Okay, we're keeping that bottoming one void mirror. And then I think I have to bottom a land. There's the map that I couldn't stop with oof. There's an oof. All right, so Void Mirror's online, it looks like. So they might have to crack map for a forest here. They got their Tron online. Please give me Damping Sphere. So they can't cast anything. Give me Damping Sphere, please, please. Yes! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Give me that. Come on, there's hope. There is hope. Don't have a forest. Do not have a forest. Do not have a forest. Oh, thank you. Come on. Come on, we can get this. We can get this. You can't cast anything, what are you doing? Yes, pass that turn. Pass that turn. And a Gadok Teague. Did I play Oof or Teague? Um, if they draw a forest and they can slam a Karn, I gotta play Gadok Teague. The thing is, if they got a forest and they play a chromatic star, then they'd be able to 
crack it for green and play more spells. Nothing? Oh, I can slam oof here? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We have four pieces of hardcore hate on the table and I love it. Please. I'm in so much euphoria right now. Don't crush my hopes and dreams while I'm this high on life. No, 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 no. Thrag Tusk. Okay, there's, there's a roadblock in our way, boys. There is a roadblock in our way. <sighs> All right, um... That sucks. I gotta get out this Loxodon. I, I have to just pass and hold up raise the alarm. That is what they needed to be able to have a fighting chance. That is exactly, they can also worm coil here if they got it. They're swinging. Do they have like another Thrag Tusk or something? Nothing, okay. Raise the alarm. And then Legion's Landing. And then Venerated Loxodon. Our board is thick now. You get one more land, they can play like a Karn. Oh no. Oh no. This is not good. Chromatic star gets countered. I mean, Gadog Teague's still holding down the fort. They're cracking their nurturing peat land. Verting command. Okay, I think I can throw my oof because they're definitely going to block oof with the Thrag Tusk and then I can play a second oof. So let's do that. Just alpha, swing everything, flip our legions landing. Okay, they eat a vampire, that's fine. And then play a second oof. And then we hold up our Verdant Command. And this could be it. I'm so scared to commit this Yadok Teague though. We know they played Dismember. So we could alpha if we're fearing Dismember still because they'd, they'd have to pay for life. All right, let's uh, gain three life and make some squirrels. Okay, if I swing everything and they block venerated Loxodon, that is 10, 11, 12, 13. That's exactly as lethal, but I am like so scared of everything right now. I'm I am terrified. Like if they block Gadok Teague and they have something to live with, I basically lose the game. I basically lose because if they have um, Warping Whale, and and they make a Chum Blocker for my Loxodon, I'm screwed. I think I have nothing to fear. I think I keep Gadok Teague back and I just go one more turn. I don't think I have anything to fear with Teague on the table. I don't have anything to fear with Teague on the table, right? I just get in with everything except Teague. I'm like so terrified right now. I'm being very careful. They block the big oof. I still got the small oof. Wait, they're dead just from that? I didn't do math correctly. I didn't do math. I suck at math. 
and we got there. The 5-0 taking down Tron. I thought I was so dead. I didn't think I was going to 5-0 that league. I didn't think it to be true. I was like, there's no way the magic gods threw Tron at us in round number five. I was like, there's no way this can be real life right now. But they were putting us to the test. They were, they were, the magic gods were testing us to test our will, test our might, just to be sure that we would never give up. And we didn't give up. We fought for it and we prevailed through our hardest, that Tron is our toughest matchup. That is why our entire sideboard besides Rip is dedicated to hating Tron because of that right there. Oh my goodness. It actually happened, boys. Well, you know what it's time for. We got some treasure chests to open. We have 11 chests today. So look at this, look at this beautiful trophy, competitive. And I got like a hundred play points out of that. All right, let's open up chest number one. We're bound to get something good in 11 chests, right? 35 play points. I will absolutely accept that many play points. That is beautiful. All right, anything over um, 10 or over 15 play points, I think is considered good. Five. Verdurous Gear Hulk and Galvanic Relay, eh. Five, and a bunch of junk rares, a speck of the indigo and apocrysite junk. 15 play points, I'll take it. Temple of Silence. We get five play points. Revel Arc, that's gotta be like 0. 0.1 ticks, right? And spawn of Thraxes. And then five play points. Sarkon, the Masterless, and Stench Keeper. Look at that dude's face. Look at that fish's face. That looks so weird. All right, another junk. And then 25 play points. Heck yeah. Silumgar Assassin. Five play points. Meddling Mage. Oh, that's got to be at least one tick, right? It's got to be. And I don't even know what this is. Telemann Performance. Probably not worth anything. All right. Three more. 15 play points. That's an acceptable amount. And we got an Avatar, which is a kitty. And then a Sao Enlightened Bushi, which is probably not worth anything. All right. Two more. Five play points, Den of, oh, look at this chest. Den of the Bugbear and Stone Frog. Oh, this has gotta be worth something. That's definitely a few ticks right there. I will accept that. And then final chest, 10 play points and Hive Mind, rip. All right, that was good. We got almost three leagues worth the play points here. So yeah, th the next three leagues are essentially paid for. And we got probably like um, enough ticks in that to probably get us up to around 70 here in the collection, which is seven leagues. So looks like we can pay for the next 10 leagues for sure here. And yeah, that's awesome. Good um, amount of ticks to fall back on for leagues if we end up flopping. All right, that was awesome. Now let's go on to the wrap up and talk about our first ever 5-0 since uh, returning leagues back to the channel three months ago, or not three months ago, it was like two months ago. And cut. All right, let's talk about some Ginny Fay Jetmir second for modern. And uh, yeah, like it was just obvious a second ago, we got our first 5-0 back at league since we started them up again two months ago. And it, I'm very proud of it being from a deck that I made myself. I, I brewed this up myself and I'm very, very proud of it. Although, would I play Ginny again in it? Probably not. I think it's just the reason we 5-0 is just because of the fact that tokens, as I said before, are a very underrated archetype. Very, very strong because it's hard to interact with them because spot removal, does doesn't do very good against tokens and modern right now is jam-packed with spot removal decks so basically your biggest worry is fury fury is a problem but most other things you don't really care about so i i really like tokens a lot it's just uh tron is scary as you just saw and uh you know it's it's you got to really prepare for that in your board i think this board is definitely well prepared for it could definitely have a couple more things like 
maybe Conclave Tribunal is something that can potentially go for more Tron hate. But then again, we're so dedicated to Tron hate. Like, Conclave Tribunal is good against a lot of other things. You can bring it in um, a lot. But, like, what are you going to bring it in against? Like, walkers, artifacts, and enchantments? Like, if it's an activated ability artifact, oof, shuts it down. And if it's um, if it's not, then it's something that Sundering Grove can kill. So, I don't know. Maybe there's something else you can do there. But I like it. I'm, I, I'm content with the entire sideboard and the main deck for the most part, except Ginny Faye. So Ginny Faye's ability was awesome. When we can get it online and it was posing a threat, it was dealt with easily. And like I was saying, the reason why is because we were just talking about it. Spot removal doesn't affect tokens very well. So the opponents are less inclined to use their spot removal on our tokens. So they're just holding them in their hand. So by the time we played Ginny Faye, they're like, oh, well, I was holding the spot removal for the longest time. I'm just going to use it on Ginny Faye. So they already have all their spot removal ready to go for it when you play it. And that is just a turn where you tap out for three mana for something and then it gets killed. That's really a momentum loss. And I don't like that because I want all my token, like I want, like I'd rather on the third turn play like Lingering Souls or Spectre Procession because at least if they use a spot removal on one of the tokens, the other ones will still stick and you'll still have a board state and you're still doing something. So while Ginny Faye's ability is a cool, it, I don't think that she is very safe to play. I'd rather just go more in on the tokens. And uh, Ginny's face slot took up where Force of Virtue was. And you could definitely put in Force of Virtue instead over Ginny Faye and it'd be great. Um, and then that brings us to the fact that we're basically splashing green just for Verdant Command and that's it. Is there any reason to go green? Like... Wouldn't you rather just go mono white to make the mana base more consistent? And yeah, that's a good point. But green in the sideboard gave us Gaudok Teague, which is huge against Tron, and that's awesome. Oof can easily be replaced with um, Stony Silence. And then the, the Sundering Growth is hybrid green white, so you can play it in mono white too. So I don't really know. That's really up to you whether you feel splashing for the Verdant Command is worth it. It is a very excellent token maker, it's a good card. But there's probably more options you can run in Mono White, like Servo Exhibition is something that is literally another two mana for two tokens, given it's not instant speed and doesn't gain you three life. But you can run a more consistent and painless mana base and run more tech lands, which is another thing that's very important. You can run something like Shafat Dunes. You can run something like Castle Ardenvale. You can run some canopy lands like Silent Clearing, and then that would also give you a better splash potentially for Lingering Souls' flashback. And so maybe just going typical mono white slash black white tokens would be better. Um, despite the fact that this went 5 0 to League, I think that maybe sticking to the consistency of trying to be generally one color might be better for you. That, that is probably my con conclusion. Um, there's times where I'd be like, yo, I want to play Skyclave Apparition over Path because it's more versatile, but no, I, I was very, very happy with Path. I think it was great. It was cheaper, especially when we're holding up instant speed spells like Raise the Alarm and Verdant Command. Holding up the instant speed Path as well can make you just extra tricky, and just the efficiency of it is just really good. I really, really like it a lot because there's going to be some turns where you're able to Path and then flash back your souls. You know, it's just really efficient on the mana because we got stuff to do, and we got activated abilities to use from like Castle or like Adonto and whatnot. So yeah, like that that's all I really have to say about this deck today. Take that as you will if you're gonna brew your own tokens deck. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about the deck in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any ideas for future decks and let me know com our question of the day was uh, what is an archetype that is very underplayed and underrated in the modern format? Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. And a huge thanks to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. Their names are scrolling on screen. And if you would like to help monetize this channel as well, you can find the Patreon link down below. And if you need to pick up some magic cards, TCGplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And of course, all the links are down below in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.